Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Heather Kaluris, and Pastor Janelle invited me to be here with you for worship today. Um, I am one of the newest staff members in the Synod office, working with Bishop D. Peterson. So it is a joy to be with you here in worship. I drove into the parking lot, I saw the lake, and I was like, first, it's a beautiful day to be driving through the countryside to be here, but you have a beautiful setting. And what a gorgeous weekend as we gather to praise God. So welcome to worship today to those of you who are here in person and those who are watching online. One of the joys of the job that I currently have in the Synod office is I am in a different congregation almost every Sunday. So I will try to do things the way you do. If I don't, just laugh and we'll move on. <laughs> As we worship today, we begin with our words of welcome. This is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now as we join our voices together in our opening words of faith, just take a moment to center yourself. And now please stand as you are able. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my thoughts and actions before I do. You search out my path and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before the words are on my tongue, you know them completely. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may follow and serve you in newness of life. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May the Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And now we'll join in singing our gathering hymn, Lift High the Cross, stanzas one through three.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, direct us in all that we do, so that with your continual help, all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, may glorify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is found from the book of Deuteronomy, <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 30. Moses speaks to the Israelites who are about to enter the land promised to their ancestors. In this passage, he lays out the stark contrast before them. Choose life by loving and obeying the Lord, or choose death by following other gods. Beginning with the 15th verse. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the New Testa Testament reading is from the letter of Philemon. While Paul was in prison, he was aided by Onesimus, a man who had run away from Philemon, a slave owner and a Christian friend of Paul. Paul told Onesimus to return to Philemon and encouraged Philemon to receive Onesimus back as a Christian brother. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker. To Aphia, our sister to Achippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love, and I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, 
welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing, owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all of your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. It is an honor to be here with you in worship this morning on this Labor Day weekend. And you'll see at the end of the service, we have a blessing for all our vocations, the things we do in our labors, in our daily lives. as she brings energy and insights into our Compensation and Guidelines Committee. And I work with her on that mostly during the winter and am grateful for the insights she brings. She's also part of our deans and the dean of deans, and so she shares her ministry with the greater church. This morning, I bring you greetings from our synod office, from Bishop D. Peterson and our entire synod staff. Our Synod vision statement reminds us that God places us in cities, farms, and towns under one prairie sky. Together, our Synod is comprised of 230 congregations from places like St. Cloud down to Worthington, from Redwood Falls to St. Peter, from Wilmer to Litchfield to Hendricks and Pipestone, and so many places in between. Our synod includes over 350 active and retired pastors, as well as over 100,000 baptized Lutheran Christians who serve Christ together. As God's people, in this corner of Southwest Minnesota, we work together to praise God, to proclaim God's words of love and grace. When I was in college, one of my best friends spent several months studying abroad in Nepal. She lived with a family in very rural Nepal and had goats and chickens who slept with her in the family's small home. I love to hear her tell her stories about trekking through the mountains there, 
as well as her frequent encounters with animals like buffalo, water buffalo, and monkeys. Even though I thought the monkeys were cute in her pictures, she would patiently remind me that monkeys were actually quite the nuisance in daily life, and sometimes people would need to trap them to get rid of them, to get rid of the annoyance and the nuisance that they could be. My friend also shared with me how hard it was to trap and catch a monkey, because monkeys are fast, monkeys are agile, monkeys can be smart, and they can be up the nearest tree before you can blink. But one of the best ways to catch a monkey is to put a banana or something colorful and shiny that might appeal to them in a jar. Then the monkey sees that banana, they see the thing that they want, and naturally they pursue it. When the monkey inevitably reaches its hand into the top of the jar and grabs the banana, it can't pull its hand back out. It's stuck. But the clever and mischievous monkeys can't get their hands out of those traps again. The monkey's closed hand holding tight to what he wants, the banana, the other colorful appealing object, with the object in its hand, the hand can't get pulled back out of the jar or the trap. The monkey's own curiosity, the monkey's own desire keeps it trapped in the trap. There's no way in the world the monkey wants to let go of the banana. There's no way in the world the monkey is going to loosen its grasp on the object of its desire. And so that curious, nuisance, cute monkey stays trapped. Now, as we follow Jesus on his journey here in Luke's gospel, you may wonder what a story about monkeys has to do with anything. Yet our gospel reading today tells us this very difficult truth from Jesus and raises a question for us. What are we holding on to too tightly? What are we clinging to that may keep us trapped, like the monkeys get trapped in Nepal? We've been hearing Jesus' teachings lately as he moves closer and closer to Jerusalem, and we've had numerous weeks where our gospel readings have raised significant questions about what we value in our lives, what we value in our world, what we value in our congregations. Today, we hear Jesus teaching about the things we hold on to too tightly in our lives, as well as raising the question, about what things are we willing to let go as we follow him. Jesus' teachings can make us unsettled, they can make us uncomfortable, because sometimes he speaks hard truths, and because he can challenge us and the choices we make each day. The final verse of today's gospel is enough, even if we didn't read the rest of the gospel, to leave us wrestling with Jesus' call for us. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you don't give up all of your possessions. There are hard truths in our gospel reading this morning. And today's gospel, Jesus' words make us again ponder, what things do we hold on to so tightly? What are we not willing to let go of so that we can follow Jesus? What things are we willing to let go of? But what keeps us trapped like the monkeys trying to hold on to a banana? What are we willing to let go of so we can be more free to follow Jesus, more free in our lives of faith? Martin Luther, over 500 years ago, talked about the power of the things we choose to hold on to and what we choose to place in God's hands. He said this, I have held many things in my hands, and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. Listen to Martin Luther's words again. I have held many things in my hands, and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. Today, as we hear this call from Jesus to be his disciple, his call is that we can be free to follow him, not trapped like the monkeys in Nepal can be. He wants us to be free from those things that ensnare us, those things that hold us bound, those things that trap us, that could be our possessions, 
our relationships, our own plans for our lives laid out in careful detail. He's calling us to place all those things in God's hands so we can walk by faith, so we can be his disciple. The call from Jesus is to be able to walk with him with freedom, with faith, able to place in God's hands all the things we love and deeply care about. So as you came into worship this morning, you got a little small piece of paper, and you should have a pen. If you don't in your purse, there's some in back. So as I conclude this sermon, I ask you to take that piece of paper out that you were given. Write down on it something that you need to place in God's hands. Maybe it's a decision you're struggling with. Maybe it's a relationship you need guidance in. Maybe it's the choice to downsize into a smaller home. Maybe it's a grief you carry with you. So take a moment to write it down on your paper, and then, as you're able, bring it forward to the basket that is placed there by the baptismal font. Bring it up, placing that thing in God's care, God's hands, trusting him to hold it and care for it with you. And as you come forward, there'll be music playing, and you can write down what you need to, and then bring it forward.
I was told in back that the microphone is having some problems. Is it working better? Is that a head nod? Okay, wonderful. Now we'll continue our service with the profession of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of definitely on. <laughs> As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for the church around the world and for the mission of the gospel. Refresh the hearts of your people, deepen our understanding of every good thing we share, and strengthen our partnerships in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. For the well-being of the earth and all its creatures, for trees and forests, for all that will yield fruit this season, and for streams and other bodies of water. Lord, in your mercy. For the national and international organizations who give support and comfort to others, Grant wisdom and compassion to the workers at the Kikatiti Secondary School, at the World Mission Prayer League, and at Robin's Nest. Lord, in your mercy. For all in need, for those who suffer from disease, who struggle with homelessness or food insecurity, for those whose family life is difficult, and for all in this community who need your care, especially Grant, Terry, and Alice, Ron, Lloyd, Howard, and Jeff. Lord, in your mercy. For this community of faith, for all our labors, begun, continued, and ended in you, that they glorify your holy name. Bless your people with the strength to live into their many vocations for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the saints who now rest from their labors. Give us faith like them to love you with all our hearts, and by your mercy bring us to everlasting life, especially Leroy Schmidt, Tom and Rhoda's father, who now cling to the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a verbal sign of peace with one another. As you have shared your signs of peace, please be seated for the announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Um, a couple of uh, announcements this morning. Um, the church office will be closed on Monday uh, for the Labor Day holiday, so Nobody will be in, so if you have pressing matters, hopefully the pressing matters won't be too pressing until Tuesday. Um, next Sunday, we will welcome to Sunday School uh, the three-year-olds, where they will receive their Milestone Ministry pillows and prayer books. So we'll, uh, that will take place um, during uh, the uh, service next Sunday. So if you have a three-year-old uh, that is going to be coming to Sunday school this uh, this year. Please 
uh, come and uh, take part in that. And then Wednesday, September 7th at 6 p.m., we have Mission Possible and Su Sunday School Teacher Orientation. And at 6.30 p.m., Mission Possible and Sunday School Parent and Student Orientation and Registration Night. So if you have a student that will be at Mission Possible, uh, parents, please uh, come with your students at 630. That way everybody has the right information and everybody is on the same page as far as what's happening. Uh, God's Work Our Hands Sunday uh, will be on September 11th, which is fast approaching. Uh, we have a few, a few things lined up. So if any of these interest you, please take mental note. Um, yard work uh, will be done for a couple of families in our congregation who uh, haven't been able to uh, keep their yards up as they had in the past due to health concerns. So we will be working on a couple of yards for uh, them. And also uh, the parsonage where uh, all the trees were damaged uh, in the storms this spring, there are big holes in the yards, so we'll uh, need to take care of those as well. Um, and I believe we will be uh, having freezer meals being created for those that are in need of them. And um, sorting uh, clothes for clothes with love. And Tracy Sterner will be the contact person for that. Um, Jonathan Olson uh, and some of the trustees will be um, the point people for the yard work um, for the congregational families. And um, we haven't talked to her yet, but we'll probably have a coordinator for the freezer meals as well. Um, and then if you are uncomfortable doing any of those, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you can bring supplies for the backpack program. And we have a list of uh, things that are recommended donations uh, for that ministry that is through the school. And the amount of uh, food that is sent home on weekends for the kids is quite amazing for our communities. Um, when you see the amount of need there is in our school district, this is a great thing to support. Um, last week we had uh, our church council meeting and uh, we are looking forward to uh, seeing the fall programming happen uh, on the deacon side, the trustees side. They are working on uh, looking at what needs to be done around the outside before winter hits, but also uh, air conditioners and furnaces that need to be replaced and updated and funding options for those and all those fun things. And um, we also talked about um, missionary, the missionary funds. Um, thank you. We always thank you for your support on keeping the lights on in the building and for keeping pastor paid and, and the staff paid. But we also have mission giving, and we thank you for your faithfulness in that as well. Um, we support um, the Kikatiti School in Tanzania. Uh, that Jonathan has been to in the past. So if you have questions on that ministry, you can ask Jonathan. Um, we support the World Mission Prayer League, uh, Anita and Charles Jackson, uh, in their ministry there. And then we also support the Robin's Nest uh, Orphanage in Jamaica. All three of those things have been uh, uh, missions that our congregation has supported for a long time. So if you have questions on what we do, what they do, uh, please ask any of us on the church council. Um, Jonathan has also been to uh, Jamaica, uh, to Robin's Nest, so he can answer those questions as well. So, um, and with that, thank you for your generosity once again, and we will ask the ushers to come forward. Thank you.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples. and see. For those who are at home, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Now please be seated.
Please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And in honor of Labor Day, we're closing our service with a blessing of vocations. Martin Luther spoke about all of our work and rest being holy in God's eyes as we served him together. And so today we'll have a blessing of vocations that you'll find in your bulletin. Siblings in Christ, both your work and your rest are in God. Will you endeavor to pattern your life on the Lord Jesus Christ in gratitude to God and in service to others at morning and evening at work and at play all the days of your life? I will and I ask God to help me. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the power of the Spirit, you have knit these, your servants, into the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with favor upon them in their commitment to serve in Christ's name. Give them courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now receive this sending blessing. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Now we'll join in singing our sending hymn.